and we're live. All right. It is Friday, October 12th, 2018. I'm Micah Sargent, and right now we're going to talk about Apple Chipgate. Oh boy, another gate. We got to follow up on that. The Apple Watch Nike Plus model and so much more because this is the iMore Show. Joining me this week, oh, I'm afraid to say that we don't have the cornerstone <gasps> of the podcast here today, Lori Gill. Lori Gill, Lori Gill, we are sending some some uh, some get well soon vibes so that uh, you know just 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 a few uh, throat lozenges and whatnot, and she'll be back and ready to roar next week. But until then, I am excited, of course, to in, to to welcome back to the show this week, Georgia the underscore Dow. We missed you, Georgia Dow, and we're happy to have you back. Thank you. I'm happy I was. Ma I'm happy I was even noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Lori was uh, pretty pretty convinced that we weren't even going to be able to do the show Aww. without you. So, <laughs> well, I was really devastated that Lori's not here. She says she's watching. Let me miss you, Lori. Hello, Lori. Miss you. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> it's never the same without the mother of dragons. I know. <laughs> And of course, I am excited and happy to have Renee Ritchie here with us today. How you doing, Renee? With Lori watching, does that mean I have to be on my best behavior or my worst behavior? You have to be at least entertaining. Yes, uh, you have to be entertaining. I think if Georgia's watching, it's worst behavior. If Lori's watching, it's best behavior. That's probably true. Well, because Georgia can legally have me committed. So that's <laughs> And if I'm watching, then I just need you drinking coffee and talking about dogs. So just keep oh, that so in mind. Much coffee. So much. <laughs> Micah, before we start, I wanted to thank you because you were kind enough to join my vector video today. Um, we did. A, I did a mashup, a collab. I think the kids call it a collab, <laughs> all about Siri shortcuts. And I had to ask, like, who are my way smarter friends that I could gang press into doing this? And you very kindly said that you would join us. Christina Warren, mutual friend, Christina Warren, Chris Connolly from Daily Tech. Um, Matthew Casolini who literally worked on Siri Shortcuts before it became Siri Shortcuts when it was still work uh, workflow and the incomparable, can I use that, TM Jason Snell, uh, the amazing <laughs> Federico Vitici from Mac Stories. And you guys yeah, know. I'm excited to see this video, Renee. Um, I'm alive, like minutes, minutes before the so, podcast. So this is going to give me all of the best shortcuts, the stuff that I should be no, so I, I was very careful with it because shortcuts is like this duality where on one side, it's a way to take the stuff you already do and just add a Siri trigger to it or a widget trigger to it so that you can do it very easily, very conveniently. So if you always order coffee in the morning or you always have a playlist when you run or you, you don't want to find your keys, you can very quickly add a voice command like I set up mine. Uh, with the um, tile app. So I just say, where are my house keys? And they beat for me and I go get them. So, or like, get, get my coffee ready and it's ready when I get to the coffee shop or pizza time, you know, all these great things. But when you're way smarter than me, it is a full blown <laughs> workflow automation builder that can do everything from, you know, basically running scripting code. Uh, and so I got everybody to share their getting started tip. Cool. So, because I think a lot of people are intimidated when they just That's open it. I'm shortcuts. scared. I'm scared. I, I need someone. To, I I want to watch this just so that it can walk me through and make me less scared because I really want them. Micah's my, Micah's smiling face makes you less scared. And then I also <laughs> asked them true. they're That's one true. of their favorite shortcuts. And I don't want no spoilers, but Micah might or might not have contained Ms. Beyonce Knowles. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Now, is is the programming of this all set up so I can just like copy and or like like follow the steps and go in or do I still it's need It's not instructional it's aspirational. Okay. So this, oh. this will tell you how to get started but then it will okay. show you what you can accomplish once you've done. And then I... you just private message Micah and he'll <laughs> walk you through everyone yeah. you want to do. So that's what we're All saying. Of them. Message Micah, he'll do it for you. No? If you pub no no see if you public message Matthew he okay. loves to uh, he loves to, to build that? workflows now if you if you do want to do workflows related to home kit home automation uh, hit me up that's that's the one that I shared on the show or rather on the on the video and talked about and and in fact I mentioned I don't know if it made it into the video but I mentioned I need to ask Matthew for some <laughs> advice for some next steps because I want to right and I, I won't spoil it but it does a couple of things 
to get my day started. And what I'd like for it to do is ask me if I, because every morning I try to start my day with like about 16 ounces of water before I do anything else. I drink, drink some water. Yeah. Um, and so I'd like for it to say, Hey, are you drinking your water? And if I say yes, then it logs that water in the Apple health app. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that that's... takes away all of the difficult, the grunt work of being able to log if you are drinking enough. Now on the iMore like, you know, website, are we going to have instructionals? Because I need no, there's instructionals. there's so many. I'm yes? okay. com slash author slash Matthew dash Casanelli. And Perfect. I'm, you can find it just by Googling I'm more in shortcuts. Okay. And he's got a ton of stuff. And Vitici's got so much stuff. It's a, it's a smorgasbord of stuff. And we have okay. a ton of links in the video. There's a ton of links to oh, resources like from the documentation to slash R slash shortcuts to share cuts. I mean, just there's so much. You can download and is this, a lot of Like them. explain me like I'm five kind of a thing. Like how <laughs> explain much you knowledge like you're explain you like you're a Renee year old is what it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So I'm excited. When does the video come up, Renee? It, it came up like half an hour before the show. Perfect. It's up now. Okay. I'm going to take a look and see, and then I'm going to try to, yeah, I'm going to try to implement first. my own. You finish yeah, the podcast do first. Don't do okay. It, okay. Don't, do <laughs> don't start now. Don't okay. start now. Okay. We have wait. Everyone wait. And then after the podcast, we will all jump in Together. and then we can talk about what was the experience of doing this and then using them. Perfect. But youtube.com slash vector show. You can find okay. it there. There you go. But not now. But after not at this moment. After the show. Afterward. Now when that Micah you're tell, here with Micah us. tells you, when you yes. have permission. <laughs> <laughs> Once you have my permission, you could get it. Right. Me. When Simon says. All right. So Simon says we should talk about the something chip terrible, gate something follow up. Yeah, something terrible, something terrible. Um, Renee, what's going on? We talked a little bit about that, didn't we? Uh, last last week, last show. Um, Previously on iMore show, <laughs> Bloomberg News accused Apple, Amazon, and 28 other unnamed companies, but which included a U.S. bank, of being infiltrated at the hardware level by chips that were snuck into the motherboards at some uh, factory in China by operatives of the People's Liberation Army by Chinese intelligence, essentially, uh, which would backdoor all of these servers created by Supermicro and deployed by companies like, or previously deployed by companies like Apple and Amazon and so many other companies around the world. Um, a good description of it, and I forget who said this, but Supermicro is essentially to server hardware what Microsoft was to, or Microsoft is to desktop software. It's just ubiquitous. Wow. You know, they're the brand name. Uh, and previously, Apple said uh, no, and Amazon said no, and Bloomberg goes, uh-huh. Uh, so we were left at a bit of a quandary because it didn't make sense that Apple would deny it if it was true, and it didn't make sense that Bloomberg would stick with it if it wasn't true. But since then, Bloomberg has continued to say, uh-huh, but Apple and Amazon have escalated in a way I have never ever seen these companies, especially Apple, which usually does not answer or is incredibly terse if it does answer. They went all out. They put out a statement on Newsroom. They updated it over and over again. Amazon put up a letter from their chief information officer saying, nope. Then Apple put up a letter from their in, their chief of, in, of information security saying, nope, this never happened. And these are public companies. These are companies that can be sued by the SEC and by shareholders if they lie, if they lie a little bit, if they lie once. These are companies that could have easily said, we don't know what's going on here. We take allegations very seriously. We're investigating them. And like a week later, we would have been worried about Gmail leaks and Taylor Swift and Kanye, and we would not even have paid any attention. They could have totally gotten away with it, but they did the opposite. They doubled, tripled down. And now we've had uh, people who work at the NSA say they don't know what's going on. We had the FBI say, we're not allowed to deny this stuff, but emoji shrug. Um, <laughs> And it, it really and Bloomberg is still sticking with it. The only named source in the Bloomberg article who was a researcher, uh, someone who presents at Black Hat, went on a podcast and said, I initially thought that this article was credible, but reading it over, I have some concerns, including the fact that what I told them could happen is what they said did happen. And I'm just a guy working in my garage. It is highly unlikely the Chinese army would use exactly the same tactics that I would use. Like they would have a difference in their procedure and that would be noted, but it looks like Bloomberg took what I gave them and like said, that's what happened. And the picture that I sent them, which was not of a hardware exploit, but was, was of a chip roughly that size. They used that as a picture of the chip of the hardware exploit. Whoa. So, and they also did a little bit of investigation and said that there's been allegations by these authors that have not panned out, including like a, a hack attack on a pipeline, which 
everybody said was not hacked. And another article, I forget what it was about. It was another major hacking incident that the New York Times and I think the Washington Post said did not happen the way Bloomberg said it happened. So my best guess right now, previously I was like, maybe there's someone at Apple who knows about this, but it's not allowed to tell anybody else. But when you have like the chief legal officer, their previous one, Bruce Sewell, said he called the head of the FBI legal and the FBI legal said, we don't know anything about this. When you have people like this who aren't in on the loop, the head of information security, it's like, this is happening. I'm not even going to call my boss. I'm going to call the FBI and they're immediately going to tell me not to tell anybody else in the company is like less likely. And what I'm thinking is either there was disinformation or what often happens in journalism is the dirty little secret of journalism. And I apologize for going on so long about this, but the dirty secret in journalism is that reporters get facts, but reporters and editorialists especially even editors who work with reporters construct narratives out of these facts because people don't find facts interesting. No one reads like a list of facts published in an article. They want a story. And often the stories that are created out of the facts are nowhere nearly as accurate as the facts. Mm -hmm. And we see this with Apple all the time. And Tim Cook has said this, you know, they take one source from the supply chain and they create a story. And then Apple comes out and goes, sorry, we actually did sell a crap ton of iPhones. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what you guys were thinking. So I think that's what happened is that there were a little, there were some facts and there was a very famous episode of the newsroom called Red Team 3 that shows how this kind of stuff can be manipulated, where you think you know something, you talk to somebody else, and instead of actually listening to them, you pull out the parts that you think corroborate what you know, which you didn't tell them. So like the narrative, it's like, it's never the crime. It's always the cover up. It's never the facts. It's always the narrative. And I think somewhere the narrative for this got hella broken and we spent the last week watching that spill out. It's really weird because it makes no sense for Apple to vehemently deny something that they could completely get caught on doing. It would be a public relations nightmare for them. And if this was true, there would be there's there's going to be some sort of a trail to be able to make that true. So mm -hmm. there's no way that Apple would come out and say there is no way that this is what it is. Somebody they would, would just find kind the board of try to. It. The they would kind of say nothing. Would come out. They would kind of say nothing, right? They wouldn't feed this fire. They would say nothing. They would kind of talk about something else. We're going to look into this. We're going to investigate. Hopefully it blows over if this was something that they were doing. So it completely makes no sense on Apple's side because it would not benefit them to any cause, right? Like the news cycles where we get very easily tired and look yeah. on to the next scandal. So we would just kind of like move along. So... I don't understand why Bloomberg would kind of double down. Like maybe there's some stuff that someone's trying to feed this narrative. So they have information that looks like this is what's happening, but you know, it doesn't really pass the smell test. <laughs> mm, I don't mm. like that smell. Nah. <laughs> Can you smell it? Smell like truth. It's true well, it's smell has a smell to it. It's, that's truth not has it. a nice pleasant smell and this is not that smell. <laughs> no, it just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely, I 100% agree. I think, I mean, we've got not even, you know, we talk about Apple because of the way that they're sort of more, the company is known to be a little bit more secretive, a little bit more careful about what it says. But, you know, now we've got other companies too coming out and saying 100%, you know, I don't know what this, what this uh, publication is talking about. And it's fascinating now watching instead of kind of like Renee was saying instead of the original story being the story now it's the story about the story because we're seeing the disagreements that exist between a publication and the story that they put forth and then therefore their um their journalists rep essentially their the journalist reputation versus what these other public or whether what these companies are saying and to have that disagreement there i think is an interesting story in and of itself and yeah i think it would have just disappeared had it not happened this way and now we're sort of watching it's like meta i guess in a way and it's less about the original thing and more about how at least for those of us who you know are journalists or are you know writers or what have you there's more interest here that sort of keeps this fire rolling that keeps it fueled and i'm just curious you know how long it's going to take to see the sort of end of it and what the end of it is going to be because who knows how this might shake out and whether we will continue to hear more on this story 
Lucy got some splinting to do. Whoever Lucy is, I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know who Lucy is, but Lucy, whoo, there's, there's some things to you need to say. <laughs> there, it, it's really sad though that there's there is no um, like that that news cycle. Like there's no checks and balances. Like it seems like people just put out stories in hopes of getting a whole bunch of hits. And there's I don't know. There should be more checks and balances. There's just so much information that we have to go through these days and make sure that what's being told is accurate or not, because the damage is kind of done. You can say anything, you can publish anything, and then it's, it, you know, people don't know what to believe and what not to believe, so. Do you remember Dr. House, Georgia? That's what basically it is. Everybody lies. Politicians lies, lies. Celebrities lie. Media lie. Like, the whole thing, and, and sometimes it's not, like, active lying. It's just, no, it's not, so, it's not a conscious so lie. It's that they believe misinformation because, you know, Whatever. Or, or they're so into their own crap that they, that's just their point of view. And that's why we have to have all these different, like, I hate the term fake news because people use it to mean news I don't like, which is absolutely not the same thing. Right. Uh, so I'm really opposed to the term fake news. But at the same time, you have a responsibility to be held accountable. Everybody needs to be held accountable. And if you do work in, in media, you have such, there is such an onus on you, especially in this time where media is under such a vehement attack to do the absolute best job possible, to be the like the like the Clark Kent, like like the like the paragon of journalistic integrity, and to make sure you get it right, you just can't be sloppy today. There's no room left for sloppiness, um, and I think we do that by other you know other people. Other reporters are looking into this, and they might be the ones who break it open, either for or against Bloomberg, for or against Apple or Amazon or any of those 28 companies. We still don't know who they are. <laughs> right, they only named a few, which is also hmm. Yeah. <laughs> why would they do that, right? I don't Apple know. and Amazon. Hmm, why would they drop their names? They're right. Like, I wonder. Not like Podonk Limited in Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> that just, you know, I, I, you know, there is good strategy there, but yeah, might not be. Yeah. Do your jobs. <laughs> there you go. All right. Now, before we move on to some other stuff. I would love if, let's see, Georgia, yeah, Georgia Dow, would you mind going over to thrifter.com for me? Ooh. And while I talk about thrifter, we'll have you find a delicious deal. <laughs> All righty. Oh, so I'm going to lose a little money now. <laughs> uh, in case you're wondering, thrifter is a way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value and not hype. That means you're getting the real deals, the good deals, the actual deals, and not those, you know, deals that only save you a couple, couple cents. This is the real stuff. If you sign up at thrifter.com, you're going to get thoughtfully selected deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy, as well as alerts for pre-orders and things like that. It's all of the stuff and none of the fluff at thrifter.com. Now, Georgia has been perusing the thrifter site to lose some money. And I'm curious, Georgia Dow, what have you found on Thrifter that's got you excited? Okay, so this is something I've actually been looking for. So this works out perfectly for me because there's never enough wall adapters in our house that have USB ports and we're constantly just shoving stuff in and there's never enough space because we're trying to, like I like to, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, I like to charge my whatever I'm using at the same time. So they have these uh, for the wall, you add two AC outlets and four USB ports Ooh. to your wall with the uh, Oki Power Hub Mini for 15 bucks. 15 dollars. Can you get all of four that? Four USB ports. So that for me leaves my outlets to be free. And I am, I always like, I drain everything. Whatever I use, I will drain it dead because I'm lazy. But if the power cord, it's right <laughs> there and I need to have this everywhere because i have i when i surf the web i have my laptop and my phone and so they will both slowly die on me um <laughs> so i love that and then the my my son likes to build things and so this build your own working star wars r2d2 for 76 bucks i know i know this is the thing you don't need but <laughs> it's so cool it's a working r2d2 with lights oh that sounds awesome well, yeah. I guess you'll be investing 15, 30, 45. Let's see. Uh, you know, a couple hundred dollars in replacing all of your receptacles with these ones. They're so good. That's such a good thing, though. That's just yeah, a good really thing. Is. That's like yeah. you're saving yourself like 15 bucks to not have to walk somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 
I actually I have replaced one of my uh, receptacles with with one of these that has the USB. And what you've said about like that's the big thing is that yeah. normally you plug something into one of those uh, spots so that you can plug USB in. Now you get that spot back and you get the USB too. Four. Like it's, it's fantastic. Four, Four of and them. It's like yesterday I'm watching something on YouTube. I'm watching this video and it's like at ten percent. And I'm like I'm, I'm doing the question of. Do I really need to go and walk into the kitchen to gab the charger to bring it into here? Or will it last? Will it survive? And you know it'll die at the time when you really don't yeah. want it to. And then it dies. Oh, I know. That but not with to. this. Getting, I think I'm going to get two of them. Yeah. And they're kind of, I like, I like installing electrical stuff too. So it's kind of fun to, to do. All right. Well, go ahead and check out uh, thrifter.com to get those deals. You can also follow at thrifter daily on Twitter, or if you live in the UK, you can follow follow. Yes, you can follow at thrifty UK. And if you live in Canada, you can follow at thrifter Canada. Uh, yeah. So that, you know, they're both there. Uh, so <laughs> Why does it sound like we're from Fargo. Well, I, you know, because uh, I, 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 I don't <laughs> know. know I, I was trying to do a Manitoban, Manitoban. Manitoban. Accent. Uh, yeah. So Thrifter, Thrifter CA for Thrifter Canada, Thrifter UK for Thrifter UK, and Thrifter Daily for everywhere else. Thank you so much to Thrifter for sponsoring this week's episode of the iMore Show. Let's talk about a certain uh, Apple Watch Nike Plus model. This is a fascinating thing, Renee, that you said on Twitter, I believe, where you, said, <laughs> you said, if you're going for the aluminum Apple Watch, Yes. Then you should go, f unless you want gold, you should get the Nike Plus model. Tell me more about that because I didn't do that and now I think I did wrong. <laughs> hey, so Georgia, can, you hold up, can you hold up your watch for a second, Georgia? Because she oh, has yeah. the gold aluminum. There we go. Eh, 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 la, la, la. Yeah, very pretty. What do you think of the gold, Georgia? I really like it. I really like it though, though, you know, when I, I saw your gold in, in stainless steel, it, it does, it does sparkle better than it does. <laughs> well, it's not. You lose them more well. Matt, because they're anodized. I mean, it's, yes. it's just a different yeah. material. I so you can't I see get that the glint Nike. in George's eye, like, I've got to have that one now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get the Nike it's Plus fun. in, um, so you can't get the Nike Plus in gold. You can only get it in space gray and silver. So if you want gold, you are removing yourself from contention for the Nike Plus. But if you want space gray or you want silver, Nike Plus comes in that. It comes in this band, which is all I could get because the thing was in so much demand when it first launched. But it also has these awesome, awesome sport loops that have a reflection of material so if you're out jogging or running uh or being chased by micah at night because you <laughs> di didn't play the right <laughs> three short that is um, not because micah it'll does sparkle that? it'll sparkle so that oh, the cars yeah. can see you or aim for you no but so the cars can see <laughs> you, and you, see you. Um, and it, they're really nice because you get everything you get with the sport watch it's the same processor it's the same ion x ion um, x sorry ion exchange display it's the same everything but it's got some unique nike faces on i'll pull one of them up now i've got to just swipe over because apparently that's a thing and i have to tap it because it's going to turn off being helpful to me but Ooh, so it's got these great nike I faces love that back. orange is that yeah, orange yeah you, you can there's a ton of colors for each of them and here's the uh the digital face um nice. and you look they're really cool, and it's got a built-in complication for the Nike Run Club and the new Reiki, Nike Train. Reiki, no, not Reiki, not Japanese healing. Nike, um, the Nike Training Club app, which if you're not so much a runner, it's got like 180 different exercises that you can do, you know, to to get your fitness on. Other than that, get your fitness on. Get your fitness on, and, and it's really, I mean, it's light, it's airy, it's it's. The I love the version. Nike band. Like the Nike band is yeah. really comfortable and if you're gonna like you know do anything that's like a water sport or you sweat a lot it's like i love this band but when it you're overly moist it <laughs> saturates and you know they, they, you know it's just a little icky yeah, yeah i am with you on that uh I'm wearing, yeah, I'm wearing oh, my a nice sport one. loop band right now yeah. um, with my non-Nike Plus Apple Watch. <laughs> uh, no, um, and I quite like it. Uh, or, or I quite like it whenever, yeah, I'm not, as you say, overly moist. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds wrong. But if you're doing dishes, 
Yeah. I, no, I mean, just in general, if, if for anybody who's interested in the Apple Watch aluminum, Apple used to call it the sport. They don't do that anymore. I don't know, maybe because it's you know not just for sports anymore. But if you're interested in that, the Nike, again, it has all of that stuff and the unique Nike stuff, which I think is pretty cool. Unless you unless you really unless you're work for Reebok. You know, <laughs> or Adidas. I think I think you're better off just going for Nike. Ah, uh, darn it! I got something else super fun to talk about. If you guys have a moment, yeah, I of have course, a moment. yeah. So Google had their event, their uh, Google made by Google. I forget what they call it, made by Google event this week, and they announced the Pixel Three, and it was really weird to watch, especially if you're someone used to covering mm -hmm. Apple. I have covered Google and Samsung and Sony, and and you know, I've helped out our friends at Android Central in the past, and I have mm -hmm. gone there, and it is different, but this was weird. So the Pixel 3 leaked, I think, worse than any phone in history, including the iPhone that got left in the bar because like, I think they lost a box of them and there were pictures everywhere and they were being sold before Google announced them. And like Engadget bought one in Hong Kong and did a full hands-on. Um, so it was really interesting. But then Google put out, they, they put out this video with some YouTubers saying that everything had been spoiled. And they're like, no, if you think you've seen it, think again. And that led to everybody who really didn't like the leaks because it's got a massive notch. It's got like a double iPhone size notch, even though it doesn't really have much in it. It's got a double iPhone size notch in it and a chin. And as my colleague or our colleague, Andrew Martonic pointed out, the the curves on the bottom do not match the curves on the top, which you can't unsee. Oh, yeah. So everyone's like, no. Everyone's like, no, please don't let this be the pixel. Please let there be like some secret pixel. And Google just spend a ton of money uh, hoaxing all of us, you know, lulling all of us, tricking all of us, uh, griefing all of us, roasting all of us, something. So a bunch of people went there expecting Google to say, you thought you saw the Pixel 3. Ha, 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 we would never notch, bah, ha, or something, and then come out with the Pixel Ultra. Like the internet gave it its own name and everything. They were so, and then nothing. Even though Google went out of their way the night before to say there was something else, it was nothing else. It was oh, exactly God. what was spoiled. And it just left me, like, I think it left everybody, like, there's always been this criticism of Apple in the S years. And, you, you know, wh whether you like the S models and you think that they're polished or you think that they're boring and repetitive, whatever, there's always been this criticism that the S years weren't as exciting. And this was like, it ended up being because of the leaks, but also because of the positioning, like half an S year, like a C year or something, like the top half of the letter. And this, like, you see the reactions from the YouTubers on on video coming out, going, uh, uh. That's and it, it would otherwise, I think, have been like a decent phone. Like the the, the small one doesn't have a notch, but, and the big one does, because they said the notch on the small one would be too big, and that confused me. But like, it's it's very similar to last year's. I have my Pixel Two XL. I've been trying to order a Pixel Three, and every time I get to the cart, it's empty. So please fix your shopping. <laughs> But and I'm going to order it because I get the new Pixel every year. But it it really is like a Pixel Two with a like the screen is fixed, thank goodness, because the screen last year was not good. Yeah, totally fixed the screen, which I love because right now Samsung has a chokehold on the OLED display, and that's why some of the iPhones are so expensive because they're like, haha, Apple, hundred bucks a screen, idiots. Um, and now it looks like LG has really boosted their quality and they'll have some competitiveness, <coughs> and I think that's awesome. But it was just, it was a really weird thing. And that's what it does. Pixels don't sell that well, but in terms of mind share, they're always one of the biggest competition for Apple. And some people still think the Pixel 2 has the best camera, you know, they've seen. And the Pixel 3 is, looks even better. So it's going to be interesting. But the whole thing left me really, like, I, I think there would have been 300 dozen people at Apple who would have jumped in and went, nope, nope, hold. <laughs> <laughs> and just engineered that whole thing that whole thing differently. I'm just sad that they didn't say it was the notchiest. <laughs> the notchiest. The notchiest. Ooh, the it's notch. so notchy. The Google people <laughs> notch. They could have tripled down on the notch. <laughs> are you notchy or are you nice? <laughs> like every time there's a there's a thing like this, I try to do a post. Like I did um, three things I'd love or five things I'd love Apple to steal from the Galaxy Note 9. Um, you know, like pencil support. There's like all sorts of things. And then I tried to do, uh, I, I got down to three things that I'd love Apple to steal from the Pixel. And the second one I had to, I had to scratch off the list because I, I, the speakers on the iPhone 10X are so good, 10S are so good that um, I, I don't need them front facing to have a giant chin and forehead. Thank you. I'm quite happy with super wide stereo speakers on the sides. <laughs> so what, what um, you, we have to take a look at the video for the, the, what did we end up with two? 
I mean, and even, you know, even our friends at Android Central goes, man, you're really scraping the bottom of the barrel on this. But they include a, a, high, a high capacity charger in the box, which Apple still doesn't do. Um, and I think that's important. Last year, you could say it was even because Google didn't include headphones. They got rid of the headphone jack and didn't include uh, USB-C headphones. And those headphones that, that you had to buy were like 150 bucks, which is <laughs> nonsense. So this year, there are headphones in the box, but Apple still doesn't have a USB-C or high capacity charger in the box. Hmm. So that... I thought was good. And also, I'm interested in what Google's doing with the computational photography. They still don't have the hardware that an Apple or a Google or like the Huawei P20 with its three cameras. And I think Samsung's putting out four cameras this week on the A9. I mean, it's just, it's it used to be pixel wars. Now it's camera wars. It's camera everywhere. wars. Yeah, exactly. Four Seven cameras. cameras. So they don't have the hardware, but they do really good software. And they're doing like this really cool digital zoom where they're using the shake of the optical image stabilization to take multiple slightly different pictures and then combine them together to remove noise and pixelization in digital uh, zoom, uh, which I which I think is really cool. And they're also really, they're still really good at segmentation masking and computer vision and all those things. And since Apple's about to put out a camera that has just one, sorry, a phone that just has one camera, the iPhone XR, like Google, I'm hoping Apple can, you know, beef up beef up their computational photography as much as possible. I, I found it interesting the, uh, you know, if you have some spammer or someone you don't want to talk to to answer that, you know, Google will answer for you. I, maybe that's creepy. Maybe I should be not so thrilled with that. Georgia, but I was like. It's it's so that when Google Duplex calls you, Google Answer can answer Google Duplex and they can talk. To <laughs> they can other. talk to each other for oh, a while. Oh, my joke. But so true. Yeah. I, I'm I calling to book a dinner that. reservation for Micah Sargent. Oh, why are you calling Micah Sargent to book a dinner reservation? Micah, someone's oh, Micah calling Sargent. you to book a dinner reservation. Can you get more information? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dinner reservation do you want? Oh, dear Lord. No, I actually do like that feature, though, because I don't... Um... I, I don't really, I don't really answer my phone. Uh, like I sort of screen calls essentially, let it go to voicemail and figure out. And so if I could just have it, you know, do a better job of figuring out who's on the other end, that would be nice. Um, that's why you don't answer my calls. Yeah, yeah, that's Georgia. That's oh, see, everybody my phone knows. Don't call Micah; he's not going to answer. What if What if you change your name to Ms. Beyonce Knowles? <laughs> then in that like case, I answer so fast. I would get so yeah, Lemonade. exactly. Hello? <laughs> what do you what 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 you want to talk George to? Like, me? George is like, put a put a ring on it if you like it. Then you got it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to pass the test. I'd be like, uh Google, can you make this person sing? I want to hear a recording. I gotta make sure. Uh, it's like you know, <laughs> again. make this person sing first. Make this person sing first. That's Google, make them sing. <laughs> and then you'll answer. And then I answer, yeah. yeah. That's, that's yeah, all it takes. It's worth it. Do you guys get the? Cause I, I I don't usually get robocalls, but we have this new scam going on in Canada mm -hmm. where they call you and say that you owe tons of money to the Canadian Revenue Agency, which is our version of the IRS. Yeah. And if you don't call them immediately, you're going to be arrested. And like, yeah. it, it, it just it, they just keep calling, and iOS helpfully transcribes all of them. So yes. I see they're, they're bull they're bull crap on the my, phone. Oh, my favorite. Oh. My favorite robocall that I keep getting from like, this is why I don't answer the phone. It's like from 20 different numbers and it's all the same thing. And it's like, don't be a statistic. If you fall over in your house and uh, then you should have this, this product, da, 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 da. And I'm like, I don't. I don't need that product though. I I don't know why you keep calling me from 15. Yeah, I have my Apple numbers. Watch. It will take care yeah, of me if I fall I, down. I'm good. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, from like 15 or 20 different numbers, always calling all the time. And I sometimes I do and just because I like there's like a federal do not call list or something. Yes. And I know I put my number on there before, but you know, these companies don't listen to that kind of stuff. Yeah. We also have a call from uh, China that goes around uh, similar saying the same thing that it's in uh, Mandarin. And uh, I've been getting those calls and I block every single number, but it seems like, you they know, find new numbers all the they time. Find new numbers. Faster than I, I can block. Answering. I, I just keep asking. I go, wait, Busha, Busha, Wosha, Georgia, Wosha, Georgia, Dow. <laughs> That's you're giving my number. What is that? What is that you're saying? I'm saying no, no. I'm Georgia Dow. I'm Georgia oh. Dow. <laughs> I, I remember so little Mandarin. Dian Dian Hua. So little Mandarin. Do I remember? <laughs> now, Renee, you uh, shared a Photoshop mock-up of <laughs> an iPad Pro with uh you know rounded corners room for the face id module within the display i think it's fascinating you know we saw some 
some rumors, some like sort of rumors being pushed as fact kind of thing for the face ID being able to work horizontally and vertically. So work in portrait and landscape. Um, but I can share it. Can you guys see this? Yeah, yeah there you go. There it is. Can you back up? Yeah. This is my crappy Photoshop attempt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is interesting. Um, I, it, it, and I like, obviously this is a mock-up, but yes. with the fact that, you know, the, the, so, the size of the display are rounded. We've got what is essentially a full screen iPad. It's very pretty. And I am already sort of drooling. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this. Guillermo Rambo um, at 9 to 5 Mac, he posted a bunch of stuff, the information that he said he got on it. And Guillermo's like, he's awesome because he, he reverse engineers a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him posting leaks too often. So this I don't know if he got this from code because some of the stuff he found was from previous iOS codes. Like, he found the, the glyph that showed what it looked like. And uh, I think Steve Totten Smith found the avatar kit, which is the name for all the Memoji stuff uh, in iOS 12, which shows mm -hmm. that it has to have a true depth camera because you can't do Memoji without that. And if it has true, uh, true depth camera, then it has face ID. Um, and then it's just been super interesting. So basically what we're looking at is a 12.9 inch iPad that has the same size screen, but the bezel's smaller so that it's a smaller package. So it's just as powerful but a bit more portable and a 10.5 inch iPad that has the same casing size, but the screen increased to 11 inches. So you have the same overall portability, but even more power because you have a slightly bigger screen to use it all on with an A12, is it A12X or A12 10? What is, I don't, I'm so confused now. <laughs> A12X it's processor, A12X, right? <laughs> which, yeah, which should be, you know, cause the A12 has six cores, a four core GPU and eight core neural net. So we usually, the X means more GPU. So we can see like six CPU cores, six or eight GPU cores, eight core neural net, which, I mean, that thing is already fire. That thing makes the, like the, we saw a new Microsoft Surface books and we saw the, the new Google Pixel Slate, which has two things I never want on a tablet. That is Intel chipsets and Chrome. Um, <laughs> I think that was, I mean, Anantec measured the phone version of this chip and said it was like a comparable to Skylake architecture, which is not that old. Uh, and I just think it's going to make Intel Celeron architecture weep, uh, including the Mac, the 12 inch MacBook to make no mistake about it. It's going to make all of that nonsense weep uh, because that's some powerful silicon, but face ID and landscape. It's got a new connector on the back, which is really confusing, but Steve Totten Smith and Mark Gurman said that it's probably going to be used to charge accessories, including a new Apple Pencil 2, which I really hope Apple calls the number two pencil. <laughs> and when I said that, I, I hear I hear old colleagues already say, get out. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it looks like a hell of a device. And if if the rumors are true, we should be seeing it this fall. Which it it's autumn. We're we're yeah, in fall. We're ready. I'm ready, Apple. Give Soon. me I know George Do is it. not an iPad person, but I want it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm he still. A, I get upset. My husband loves it. He carries it around everywhere. He doesn't even like. I, but that said, it's. I'm. I'm MacBook, and and he's you know an what iPad. You really want though, because like, like, when people people have a MacBook and they touch the screen and it doesn't work, and they have an iPad Pro and there's no trackpad, so they just make Say a it. smart trackpad that has a, like the space key is capacitive and when i move my finger on that it moves the cursor on the screen can't i just get my macbook to have a touch sensitive screen it's what? not mac time Come we're on. talking about ipads today I <laughs> still that's what i want because i don't want it on my ipad i want i want it all renee i want it all and i want it now i like I, uh, I love my ipad so i think i'm i'm more Yay. like your husband in that sense because i i love that device and it is my hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy um and so i'm i'm really excited about this next gen ipad that has you know the full screen and everything and i if it doesn't come in rose gold i'm going to be very upset because you know it won't the rose gold i mean like i said this in my review the the rose gold macbook better run for its for its um for its life because apples removed rose gold from everything they have that new gold that is sort of not yellow gold and it's not blush gold but it's like a brassy gold and i you think that's my face one gold to rule. i know it's the one gold to rule it all micah i like i don't rose want gold one gold to rule it all i want rose gold rose gold's <laughs> better christina warren Oh, it's so pretty. And I, I love I love my iPad. Like all of that, all of that rose gold on there. Oh, so nice. If they go, if they go orchid, I'm good. Oh, that'll work nice too. I'm good. Color. Yeah. I'm all in. 
They're not, but I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I mentioned this, but I asked somebody who bought anodization and they said that the greens and the blues are the hardest. That's why they stick to the reds and the yellows. And uh, I'll never get my green iPhone. It's not fair. I know. I, know. <laughs> I, I asked him, they just sent me pictures of the green iPod touch and it just does, it doesn't look like that. That green was hard to nail because they did not nail it. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got to go back to the green iPod Nano, the candy bar yeah. iPod Nano. It was so pretty. It was perfect. It was lovely. It That's was everything perfect. I ever wanted in a green device made of aluminum, and I miss it. <sighs> you know, in the end, if you use a case, yeah, it doesn't really matter what color your phone is. You just buy a case that's green. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Except the green forest green is not very green and it makes me sad yeah that is true i'm sorry yeah that's true this is this is blue it's blue Mm -hmm. it changes colors depending on where i I have it because of the um what's what is the word i'm looking for the color temperature changes but anyway um well let's see do we have anything else that we we need to talk about i think we've we've hit most of the big stuff today we've we've hit peak i more show (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we've hit no, peak, Lori's not here. right we've hit peak eye more show for the week um yes, this, and this is all we can do without Lori. yes that's that's exactly right i want to thank all of you for listening for those of you who tuned in live thank you so much for for being here and hanging out with us including Lori gill who we miss and we'll see back hopefully oh, next love you week. Lori. you get feel better there's a heart for Lori. uh george dow if people are wanting to get in touch with you or check out the stuff that you do where can they do so you can uh, check out Twitter. I um, sometimes, not really. Uh, it's George underscore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you can email. It might be, but I'm just, I'm just stopping social media. It feels great. I love it. It's wonderful. I think we've all been cutting back quite a bit. Um, I almost didn't post anything yesterday. Yesterday was national coming out day. And like, it was later in the day that I even remembered that that was the day. And so like, I almost hadn't even posted anything because I've been, yeah, sort of stepping back from social media as well. And I think we've all been, Joanna Stern was great. If you, if you wanted to read up anything on that, she's terrific as always. Yeah, that was uh, fantastic. Mm And, um, yeah, cool stuff anyway. Uh, but they can also head to anxiety videos.com, right? dealing with anxiety we are going to be putting up our two new videos like this week we're hoping uh on conflict resolution and on emotional intelligence no you're not but i feel nothing about it (laughs) (laughs) someone will be gifted some oh yeah (laughs) somebody needs some these can help you oh my goodness that's the best passive aggression (laughs) i've ever heard of like oh i got you a gift don't you gift this this is for you passive aggressive or aggressive aggressive i guess it's kind of aggressive aggressive (laughs) isn't it it's hard to say i don't know Uh, I'd say I need to take that emotional intelligence class. Maybe it'll teach yes. me about passive aggression <laughs> or conflict resolution <laughs> right as well. Uh, right. Renee Ritchie, if people are looking for you online, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me at imore.com slash vector. I do a daily, almost daily. I keep trying. I did four last week, four this week, Ooh. column, podcast, and video. So you can read, listen, or watch whichever way best suits you. And if you just want the YouTube, you can go to youtube.com slash vector show. And I'm still on social because unlike Georgia, my profession does not benefit from my absence of it. So you can find me at Renee Ritchie on the social thing. And I'll talk about Georgia in her, in her, in her absence. Aww. Aww. <laughs> if, if Lori Gill were here, you she tell you you can find her at a p p a h o l i k that's at appaholic on twitter and at lori gill on most other social things uh although i think that along with us she's also <laughs> taking a break or or stepping away i guess from social media a little bit uh but still there still there and you can find writing from all of us across the scope and time of iMore <laughs> over on iMore.com. Uh, if you're looking for me online, you can find me at Micah Sargent, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee for links to all the stuff that I do. Um, thank you so much to Jim Metzendorf for editing the show and making us sound so great every week. And uh, we will, of course, be back next week with more from the iMore Show. Depending on when you're listening, I hope you have a great week or weekend. And this has been the iMore Show. Awesome. Now can we watch Vector?
Now it's time to go watch Vector, folks. Go watch it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and while we were filming, it was just disclosed that that.